Hey everybody, what's going on? My name is Galaxy. Hope you guys are having a good day and welcome to this video. Now, I'm actually really, really excited to show you guys this build because I've been so, uh, well, what is it called? Like tunnel visioned on the, the one specific flak build, you know, the crit. I was like, oh, it's so good. There's no way anything else was as good as the crit build. Um, but I finally kind of like opened up my, uh, opened up my mind to, to the idea of trying something else with flak and playing some other stuff. And I've put together a uh, rack attack build that honestly rivals it and honestly might even be better than the crit build. And that's not a joke. I, uh, I'm going to get through the skills and all that. And, you know, uh, I can't wait for you guys to see the gameplay of how this actually turns out. So, and, and with me saying, I've tested this out and I think it's very, very good. And I do not even have the best possible stuff I could have. Like, it could still be better. And I think it is just as good as the crit build. So, jumping in, we will start with the guns. I'll, uh, I'll explain all my guns. Anyways, we're going to start off with the Butcher. Uh, the Butcher is just an overall really good gun. I'm sure you guys know about it by now. Uh, it's a staple from Borderlands 2 and it's super good in Borderlands 3. And uh, this one even specifically has a 30% lifesteal after using an attack command, which I think is really good because uh, the build doesn't exactly have uh, the most health. There's definitely builds out there with more health. So if you're ever in any of those kind of low health situations, um, instead of using a skill to rely on for your health, I'm going to use the Butcher. Now we're going to skip that one. Next up is the Lyuda. I mentioned this in all my builds. Everybody needs a Molten Lyuda. I, I don't care what build you're using and I don't care what character you're playing get the Lyuda, okay? They're too good. And next up is the Flacker, another gun that I don't think I'm uh, gonna need to give too much of an introduction to, because anybody that has ever had one in Borderlands 3 knows that it is super incredible, and uh, you guys will see later on in the gameplay afterwards how good this really is with the build. I, I skipped this one for a reason, because look at this f***ing anointed skill. Look at this. Enemies damaged by rack attack take 100% increased damage for a short time. Is this real? Is that happening? I don't care what it is. If it has that anointed skill, you better be using that bitch, okay? You gotta have one of these. You got to have one of these. And I, the Shred of Fire, I think, was one of the best possible things that I could have got this on. It works so well. And even just look at the base magazine size of the Shred of Fire. 110. 16 rounds a second. This thing is incredible, an absolute melt machine. Next up is the shield. Now here's where we get into the part of the build where I uh, was talking about it could be better. Now, I'm using the stopgap and it is anointed. I would still recommend using the stopgap, but my anointed effect is still for my fadeaway build. So I was working on getting gear for this build uh, all day yesterday and I never ended up getting an anointed shield for rack attack, but uh, there is an anointed effect for uh, shields that grant an extra just, you know, charge of the racks from your shield. So tr try to use just any shield that you can get with at least like an 8,000 capacity that has that on there. Um, and if you're going for any specific shields with that that effect, go for a stopgap, go for a rectifier, go for a front loader, something along those lines. I, I'm going to be very transparent in saying that this shield is not the best it could possibly be for this build. I just couldn't end up getting one for myself for the video. Uh, next up, super important, you're going to want a bounty hunter class mod. Now, the skills are pretty helpful on their own, aside from that shark one, which pretty uh, sucks ass. But what we're looking for is a bounty hunter because uh, Flak has a 3% chance to activate any purchased hunt skill when dealing gun damage, which is really good. And the bosses are now treated as humans, beasts, and uh, robotics for Flak's hunt skills. Now, you guys will see why that is important here in a second. I'm sure you can tell it's the, the eagle skill right there. Um, and then this one has 31% assault rifle damage, which plays, again, just crazy with my Shred of Fire. The Shred of Fire is the main piece of, uh, of my build, so... The 31% assault rifle damage on top of it doubling again after using rack attack. It's going to get pretty nutty. And then you get uh, 1600 shield capacity. Next up, I'm using a surge grenade. But I'm not using the surge grenade because of the surge. I would still recommend a hex like I always do. But I would recommend a hex with this anointed skill. On action start, regenerate one grenade. Action skill start, regenerate one grenade. Which is incredible because you are throwing out racks just like... Every time you turn around, you kill a dude, you throw a rack, you kill a dude, you throw a rack, you kill a dude, you throw a rack. And next up, even just more solidifying in my Shred of Fire, 
is the atom bomb auto idle now this thing is a complete just boost to everything and anything radiation related you get 50 percent aura damage 18 percent aura burst damage 18 percent aura radius every time you kill somebody you regain 18 percent of your max health uh, you get 14 percent reload speed a 27 percent radiation chance and 1500 extra max health uh, which is just incredible. Everything about that makes my shirt of fire even stronger. So uh, what I'm just going to recommend is that uh, you don't have to go for the exact shred of fire I have. You don't have to go for the exact relic I have. But my thing with this uh, is that make sure to get a gun with this skill on it. Or even I think there's a, a similar one. The rack attacks take a 50% increased damage for a short time. Get something and then use your relic based on the primary gun you're going to use. I chose to try to fire and it happened to be radiation. So I made sure I got a relic that boosted that. Now, if you happen to get something that has this anointed skill, but it's caustic, it's shock, uh, use your, um, relic accordingly. Next up is the skills. Now I'm sure you guys have heard people talk about the skills just constantly. So I'm going to go through and, uh, just read their names and, uh, talk about the important ones, but I'm just going to you know, skip over all the gibberish that you guys most likely already know. So we're going to start out in the hunter tree and uh, just right off the bat, throw five points into interplanetary stalker. We're skipping leave no trace because we're not using uh, the class mod for this build. So leave no trace is like only just okay if you use it by itself without the class mod. So we're just going to skip it since we're not really focusing on that. Go to interplanetary stalker, load that up with five points, then go down to hunter's eye, which is the one where the class mod makes uh, a, a hell of a difference to where right now we get the... Uh, Huge damage, you get 21% credit on humans, 42% uh, armor damage on robots, and 28% uh, damage reduction versus beasts with the plus two that I have. And then the class mod that I have, I'll just show you guys once again, it turns all bosses are treated as humans, beasts, and robotics for flax hunt skills. So now you get all of these uh, procs on any bosses. Then the next up, take head count because it is far, far, far f***ing superior than eager to impress in every single way. Next up, obviously five points into two fang, three points into big game for the hunter skill durations, three points into the most dangerous game because doing stuff like uh, proving grounds, you just constantly have this effect on and it is very, very good. Next up, Galactic Shadow for one point and extra 15% crit damage is a lot of value. And then also Megavore, but that is going to round up that tree. And then moving over to the next tree, we have... Uh, we're going to actually load up Furious Attack right off the bat. I know I usually load up Self-Repairing System, but we're going damage right here. Uh, load up Furious Attack and then go down and load up Overclocked. Next up, take Look the Wounds because, again, that's a lot of value for one point. Then take Turn Tail and Run to uh, work our way down to the next tree. Then take Fast and the Furious. Now, um... So I did have two points into self-repairing system. I forgot to mention that. Those were just the points left over after I was done with the build. Uh, and then also three points into Persistence Hunter. Uh, Persistence Hunter is pretty much the only skill in this entire tree <laughs> that I think is worth it. So it's really good that it's at the top for us. So take three points of Persistence Hunter. And then, like I said, you'll have two points left and throw that into self-repairing system. And obviously, everybody, I am going to be jumping over into Improving Grounds and showing everybody the build in action so you can kind of get, get a little taste of what this is going to be like. And honestly, Honestly, I, I would almost guarantee that you are going to be really surprised with how this turns out. I know I was. Like, I was not expecting it to be even ha half as good as it is now. And it really is. So let me go ahead and get this started. Actually, I'll show you guys the roll. We don't have any damage reductions on our weapons. But we don't have any damage buffs either. So this right here is just a neutral roll. We do not have anything added. All right. Starting the Trial of Discipline. Let's head over. So obviously what you do first is you jump out, throw a rack, damage these dudes. And that's that. That's what this is doing right now.
well everybody that is how that works out on the neutral rolls just like try to imagine if you got a 70 percent elemental damage roll on that run how fast i would have gotten here absolutely like insane especially compared to uh how weak i thought this was going to be at the beginning uh it's really surprising and i really like the build and we'll honestly might use it as my main build instead of the crit build as well i do hope you liked the video uh if you did enjoy the video make sure to drop a like down below for me because i would really appreciate that and uh subscribe for more stuff because i'm always uh doing new builds trying new things uh doing farms anything potentially borderlands could come out of my channel so make sure to subscribe and stick around for that and i will talk to you guys in the next one bye